Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and compare the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 14 and see which specific phone is the better one for you, or mostly to see if it's worth going from an iPhone 8 to an iPhone 14. If you want to pick up either one of these phones, the links will be down in the description. You can get them from there. You can help support the channel at the same time. Now, side by side, you can definitely tell that in my opinion, the iPhone 14 is a much bigger phone than the iPhone 8. The iPhone 8 on the front had a 4.7 inch IPS panel and it was a pretty good screen when it first came out, but it was short lived because the iPhone 10 came out at the same time as well. This phone came out in 2017, so it's pretty much a five year old phone. The design is a bit dated. I mean, we do have the thick bezels on the top, thick bezels on the bottom. Touch ID here, which I think is cool, but unfortunately the amount of bezel here is pretty crazy. It's not, it's a smaller phone, but also it's like, you know, the amount of bezel around it, like they could do much better with the display and they have with things like the iPhone, you know, 12 mini and 13 mini. On the iPhone 14, on the other hand, we do have a bigger 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display. Now this is a very, very good display. I love this screen a lot and it is a better looking panel. It's a bigger panel and it's just a more optimized screen than the iPhone 8s. We have a notch up top, but again, that's nothing compared to the amount of bezel we have on this one. And it is a really good display. Now, if you don't like a bigger phone, then this isn't like a massive phone. You know, you definitely will tell a difference, but I think it's definitely worthwhile going up to a screen like this because of all the other features you're getting. So definitely on the front, the iPhone you know, 14 definitely wins. But weirdly enough, the iPhone 8 is one of the thinner iPhones I think Apple has ever made. This thing was insanely thin, as you guys can kind of tell. So the iPhone 14, it is a thick, it's not a thick phone, but it's a flat phone. So definitely you're getting a thicker type of feeling than the iPhone 8 with its curved design. And it's definitely a thinner phone on the iPhone 8. You're also getting a SIM card tray on the iPhone 8. Well, we lost that on the iPhone 14 series, which is kind of sad, but at least we still have it on something like the iPhone 8. And on the back, we have glass backs on both. So like I mentioned, I did like I've cracked the back of my so many iPhones I have, and this iPhone 8 is cracked too. But again, it's not a crazy big deal, but again, it's one of those things to kind of keep in mind. Now with something like the iPhone 14, we're getting wireless charging as well as on the iPhone 8, but we're getting this dual camera setup versus this smaller single lens on the iPhone 8. We also have this MagSafe capability here on the iPhone 14, which is great. You're also getting things like crash detection, as well as the emergency SOS satellite mode, as well as things like 5G on the iPhone 14 as well. But we're not really getting those things on the iPhone 8. We're also getting IP certification on both phones too, which is great. And in terms of the outside, that kind of covers it up for the most part. There's really not too many other crazy differences. Now, in terms of the longevity of both these phones, the iPhone 8, like I said, it came out in 2017, so it's not really the latest and greatest anymore. This is a phone that, in terms of the body, is already kind of outdated. I mean, it's already kind of like, like I mentioned, I mean, this is a phone that I don't think anybody's really wanting this design anymore. You look at the iPhone SE 3, a lot of people aren't picking up that phone because of the design. And this phone, even if it had the latest and greatest chips that like the SE 3, the design is kind of already pushing it. So that is kind of a problem nowadays. And so that is probably the reason why I wouldn't really like this phone. But the chipset inside is a five-year-old chipset as of this point. So no matter which way you look at it, the iPhone 8 is one of the, it is the lowest supported generation of iPhones on iOS 16. So even if it doesn't end on iOS 16, it probably will end off on iOS 17. And you don't want to buy a phone now that's already going to be outdated. If you currently own this phone, it's different. But if you are planning on buying a phone, this thing is kind of outdated because it's already one of the lowest supported iPhones right now on iOS 16. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now let's go into a speed comparison between both these phones. The iPhone 8 has that Apple 11 Bionic chip inside of it with 2 gigabytes of RAM. Well, the iPhone 14 has that Apple 15 Bionic chip inside of it with 6 gigabytes of RAM. So let's go see which one's the faster one between both. Okay, there we go. All the apps are cleared out in the background. iPhone 8 is here. iPhone 14 is there. So let's get into it. Phone calls, 3, 2, 1. Okay, I think the iPhone 14 was faster there. Music, 3, 2, 1. Okay, two different panels here. So we'll just go and let this one out as well. App Store, three, two, one. And definitely the iPhone 14 was faster there. iPhone 8 a little bit behind. Scrolling through here, let's see if there's a difference. And even here, I think there's a difference. 60 hertz panels on both, but it's still very interesting to me how much faster the iPhone 14 is kind of doing here than the iPhone 8 here. Even the loading speeds here, I mean, definitely faster on the iPhone 14. Scrolling out of here, let's go and get into their cameras. Three, two, one. Let's go and take a photo. So I would take a photo, but this one is kind of showing me that. So we'll just go and that one out. Photos, three, two, one. 
even loading into the Photos app was faster on the iPhone 14. Hopping out of here, let's go get into some of these third-party applications that we do have on both. So let's get into it. Facebook, three, two, one. Again, iPhone 8, a little bit faster there. Hopping out of, or iPhone 14 was faster there, sorry about that. So we'll get into stack, three, two, one. And again, there we go, iPhone 14, definitely faster there as well. Hopping out of here, let's go and get into Snapchat, three, two, one. There's really no competition here. Temple Run 2, three, two, one. And this is this one was quite a bit of a difference. So they both had a little downloading config thing in the beginning with, but still so much faster on the iPhone 14 here. And you're definitely going to be, this is going to go into the gaming comparison as well, like gaming speeds and everything. You're going to be seeing faster gaming loading speeds on the iPhone 14 as well, which is another massive thing. Snake first blocks, three, two, one. iPhone 14 again is a faster one iPhone 8 definitely taking its time, which is not a problem at all. Okay, let's go and hop out of this one. And we can try doing something like Genshin Impact, but that's gonna take so long on this one. We'll just load like the, the original no temple run, which I don't have. Just do Genshin Impact 3, 2, 1. It's gonna take forever on this phone. But basically, at the end of the day, the iPhone 14 is going to be the faster phone in pretty much every single area. This is a very, very fast phone here. And if you're going from the Apple A11 Bionic chip that was that's within the iPhone 8, and you're going to go up to the A15, that's within the iPhone 14, with the additional RAM, with the additional everything, you're definitely going to be getting a faster phone on the iPhone 14 than on the iPhone 8. So that kind of covers it up there. Now in terms of the camera comparison, I mean, this is definitely going to be another one of those areas. There's going to be like no competition. The iPhone 8 is a, it's, it's a dated camera when it comes down to it. You know, the iPhone 8 had a single wide angle lens on the back. The iPhone 14 has a wide and an ultra wide camera. 4K 60 on the back, which is great but you're only getting 8 1080p on the front of the iPhone 8, we're getting 4K 60 on the front of the iPhone 14, which is amazing. Now with the iPhone 8's camera, I think in this day and age, I mean, it's it's good, I guess it's good for its size and its price tag and everything, but I don't really think anybody's going to be buying this camera anymore. I think this type of lens is kind of outdated with it only having a single type of camera. We are now in this day and age where we need like multiple cameras. That's like one of its best selling points for like the newer iPhones. And I think this thing for what it is, it still gets kind of the job done. Like if you kind of clean out this lens all the time and if you you know are okay with only using video mode and portrait mode, not even portrait mode, you don't even have portrait mode on this thing, just standard video mode and photo mode, then I guess that's okay. But you are missing out on a lot of cool features that newer phones have if you're using something like the iPhone 8. With the iPhone 14, you're already getting an extra ultra-wide lens, which is awesome. You're also getting a 4K 60 on the front too, and that's not even doing anything crazy. You can use my foot down there. With this type of camera, you're already getting standard cinematic mode, which is amazing. This is really cool. This is like portrait mode for videos, but you're also getting portrait mode. The iPhone 8 does not have any sort of portrait mode on it. So that's another advantage for this phone. You're also getting another thing, which is action mode, which is like super stabilized video. You are not getting that on the iPhone 14 or on the iPhone 8, but you are getting that on the iPhone 14. So when it comes down to it, this is a way better camera setup in every single dimension than something like the iPhone 8. So when it comes down to it, and that is kind of out some of the whole entire video. The iPhone 14 is a way better phone than the iPhone 8 in pretty much every single area. I don't think the iPhone 8 is relatively even comparable in this day and age. I think if you're getting at something like the iPhone 8, you might as well go and buy something like an iPhone 10 or, or iPhone 11. That would be a way better example of a phone to buy than something like this in my opinion. I think if you currently own an iPhone 8, then maybe you can make this thing last another few months or maybe another year if you want to. If you're not really complaining about it, then you know you can keep it for as long as you can. But again, I would probably recommend just going for and maybe just picking up an iPhone 11 at the very least. You can also buy phones like the iPhone 13 in between these and the iPhone 12s. Those are definitely going to be way better phones than the iPhone 8, but that's kind of how both these compare. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out until then.